I think this has all the makings of one of these famous trilogies. We talked about the inflammatory hepatic adenomas. We will talk about beta-catenin activated adenomas in a couple of weeks. But what I wanted to talk about today is these HNF1 alpha inactivated adenomas. Here's the biopsy that I'm going to share with you. There are three cores. There's a bit of fat in every core. And one of the challenges you'll immediately face is where is the lesion and what is normal liver? Is this the lesion? Is this normal liver? It's sort of hard to tell, isn't it? I'm going to tell you this is lesional tissue. And again, the first thing we're going to have to do is to decide whether this is benign or whether this is malignant liver. And again, there's a completely different talk that covers this. Take it from me, this is benign liver with a bit of fat. And if you have this stain, this is glutamine synthetase or GS, this, believe me, is the next best thing after sliced bread. Because right off the bat, it tells you several things. It tells you that this, this, and this is all normal liver because you see that strong centrizonal staining for GS. That piece and that piece which is broken is lesional tissue because it lacks that staining. There is no other stain that can do this for us as far as I'm aware and do it so brilliantly. All right, now I'm certain that this is lesional because I chose that GS negative area. First thing that hits you is the fat. Fatty adenomas are fatty. Second thing, they have very low nuclear to cytoplasmic ratios. That reassures me that this is indeed benign. So let's take a slightly closer look at the GS stain. This is normal liver. This is staining around the central veins. This is lesional tissue. It's largely negative, but don't be afraid if you see a little bit of GS staining. This I've noticed that this does happen with fatty adenomas. Remember, as long as it's not diffusely positive, that it's greater than 50% staining, there's nothing to worry. Now you can pretty much did do what we did with the GS stain with the keratin 19 stain, but you can see it's pale, it's hard to analyze, but nevertheless, it does highlight the portal tracts here, here, and here, and there's virtually no portal tracts in here. What it tells me is that this is lesional tissue, and this is not an inflammatory adenoma, because remember, in an inflammatory adenoma, we see a fair amount of bile ductular proliferation. Even though I think this is probably benign, I almost always get a reticulin stain. Here's the reticulin stain. You can see it is intact in the, of course, in the adjacent liver, but it's also intact in the adenoma. And I know it's somewhat hard to see on very low par. Here's a higher par view. You can see that virtually all of the cells are encased by these reticulin fibers. Officially, you often see loss of reticulin fibers when you see fat. But if you have very little fat like this, the reticulin framework remains intact. Now, there are several lines of evidence that argue that this is not an inflammatory adenoma. There were no portal tract-like structures. There was no bile ductular proliferation on the keratin-19 stain. This is icing on the cake. It wasn't necessary, but I did it anyway. This is an immunohistochemical stain for SAA, and you'll see there's a little bit of staining in the adjacent liver, which is what you see. However, the lesional tissue here, the adenoma, the fatty adenoma, is entirely negative. And of course, as you well know, the diagnostic stain here is an antibody to LFABP, and this demonstrates this brilliantly. The adjacent liver is totally positive, while the adenoma is negative. Now, there's a little bit of reactivity right out there. Don't let that bother you. Some of that reactivity is probably entrapped benign hepatocytes. Some of that is bleeding, but a little bit of stain does not bother me. This is classic fatty adenoma. So just to reiterate those features, this, what we discussed, is an HNF1-alpha inactivated adenoma. The key histologic feature is fat in the adenoma. That said, you can have fat in other adenomas as well. The key pitfall is that you might mistake this for a fatty liver or steatohepatitic liver. And the key immunohistochemical stain is an antibody to LFABP. It's the loss of that antibody that is helpful. Remember, these can be multiple and these are associated with a very low risk 
of transforming to malignancy, transforming to hepatocellular carcinoma.